Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode of my Porsche 924 Safari. In the previous episode, we installed my new interior and I colored my carpets. Uh, if you missed that episode, I'll put a link for you up above so you can go catch up. If you are new to my channel and you're wondering what this is all about, I'll put a link to the playlist of this whole series up here so you can maybe go and follow that and see where this car came from. So what's going to be happening in this episode is that I want to install the headliner. I'm going to try and replace this dashboard and I am going to install these side windows and I'm going to install the rear hatch. That is the plan. Um, so it's a lot of work that needs to happen. But anyway, let's get going. So sit back relax and let's start working all right so we're going to start with the dashboard i need to first take off the steering wheel once that is done i'll take off the wiper and the indi indicator stalks and pull that off some beauty caps and then you expose the steering column once that is done we can get to the gauges and then we'll work our way through the dashboard from there so i will set you up in a spot that you can follow along like i said it's really tight quarters in here so um i don't know what the quality of this filming is going to be but anyway let's start with the steering wheel So I just want to show you this the three um, plugs down here you can pull them off with the uh, stalks on the car or you can pull the stalks slightly forward you just have to open up this cap a little bit for them to come loose so the next we're going to be doing is removing these two uh, phillips head screws so that i can pull the binnacle out and then remove the gauges from the housing Now that you have the binnacle just resting on the steering column there, it's time for us to plug it out. Remember where they come from. There's a lot of me memory in these cables, so they tend to go into the right spot. But it's a good idea to just make, make sure you understand where everything came from. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, so now that I've got all the cables disconnected, the last thing to do is to disconnect the speedometer cable. They can be a little bit tight, so grab a pair of pliers and just loosen it, and then it comes off. So now that we have the instrument binnacle removed, the next thing for us to do is to remove these three dials. And we do that by loosening that screw, that screw, and then we can put it off the center console. All right, so I've got the center console out. Um, be aware that not all 924s are the same. Um, since I've got a 1981, I've got the early style dash, which means I've got the three levers. If you have a later style 924, so that's just from, I believe, 82 up or maybe 83 up. I'm not exactly sure that where the, where the line sits. Then you'll have 944 uh, heater controls, which means you'll have a dial for one, two and three on your fan speed instead of a slider. If you have the dial, be aware that the way that you remove the instrument binnacle here is different. So you'll still have the two screws at the top that you can see. But underneath, just above your panel, there'll be two small screws as well holding it in. And on the sides here, 
there will also be two screws. So you have six screws in total to remove before you can re remove your instrument binnacle. Whereas on this early type dash, you literally just have the two and the rest is a press fit. So be sure you do this correctly, otherwise you will break it and these things are no longer available and very tough to find in good condition. Um, once you've done that, it's a matter of just going in there, removing those two screws, going in here, removing these two screws, and then going on the sides. Both sides have a screw, and then you can pull the whole center console back. Right, so the next thing we're going to be doing is to remove this glove box, and then I'm going to remove the speaker grill. box removed and the speaker roll removed the next thing for me to do is to remove this tray um, this should be attached only with three screws depending on your card um, this might be attached differently but it's normally two screws here and one screw on that side and then it should come out of the car So now we have the bolt out from the center of the dashboard. We have the two screws out on the A-pillar. So the next thing for us to do is to go underneath and get the screws that holds the dash to the sides of the body down there and down there. And the last one is this one down here. There we go. Did I say that was the last one? I was wrong. This is the last one. Right, now she should be loose. Let's see. Yes. That's what we are looking for. All right, so the dashboard is now removed and carnage has ensued again inside my car. It looks like this is a repeating pattern because that one is no better. But I'll now go and take off all the things I need from that old dashboard. I'll clean all the things that need to be cleaned and service everything that needs to be serviced. And then I'll get the new dashboard out of its box and then we'll build that up and then we'll bring it into the car. Two days later. So let me take you through the differences between this dashboard and the dashboard that comes from the 80s. The first thing you'll notice is that this is now made of ABS plastic. If we look at the old one over here, you can see that all of this used to be cardboard. This is also the reason for the dashboard cracking because you have different uh, expansions for the top layer to the bottom layer. Whereas this is now just one piece of plastic, so it should not crack again hopefully so what we need to do now is to transfer all the hardware from the old dashboard onto the new dashboard you can see i've already transferred the, the little grommets because they were in good condition i didn't buy any new ones but i also need to transfer some brackets i need to transfer some speed nuts i need to transfer a whole bunch of stuff i also need to install the vents so one here one here and one there i've already got them treated on the roof there so they're ready to go in once all of that is done we are ready to bring the dashboard back into the car
Stop. Right, so um, I've discovered something in this car which I'm not happy about and something I'm kicking myself for, for not knowing it was there. Um, but as I was working on these carpets, I realized there's a bit of a bump in the floor. And um, as you do, I started pulling carpets away. And let me show you what I found. <laughs> right there there's a rust hole I can't believe I've never seen this before I don't know if this was somehow covered up by Tecto or some other thing um, but I looked under the car it's about this big uh, rust hole running right next to the side here I was under this car so many times I looked at this floor so many times I stabbed at it with screwdrivers so many times Somehow, this hole never ever manifested itself. So you can see, it's quite a bit of an issue. The good news is that the metal directly around it seems to be hard, but this means that the dashboard is not going in. It means that these seats are coming out again, and it means that this car is going back to my body shop. So they will put in a new piece of the floor, fix whatever's going wrong there. I honest to God hope it's not a big issue. Uh, but that is halting my progress and I guess that means I'm stopping this project here even though I didn't even get through half of the things I wanted to. I thought I was on the home stretch with this car and now I'm probably going to be put back a couple of months again. So um, yeah, um, this is where the safari ends for now and I guess we'll be picking up the work on the 968 again until this guy comes back from the body shop. So uh, thank you for watching. There will be updates on this soon. Um, as soon as I know more, I'll let you guys know. But for now, this is where we're ending it. Until next time, goodbye.